My name is Francis Ajay. I do film, um, short documentaries. Basically, short documentaries based on the topic of mass incarceration, specifically children with incarcerated parent, because I myself once was a child of an incarcerated parent. I grew up in West Africa, Ghana. When I was eight years old, I was able to join my mother in America. And so when I joined her and we drove around and, you know, she bought me stuff and just tucked me in. And, you know, we went through the neighborhoods looking for schools and applying for insurance and little things like that, going to the dentist for the first time. Like I just had a feel of her, you know. It was just amazing to share that time and actually finally be with her and not just on the phone or just waiting for a vacation or just getting packages and letters. It was actually beautiful to have that physical contact, hugs and kisses and food and just trying so many different things that I hadn't tried before. It was just the best thing any child could ask for. Fast forward to maybe 2003, Brianna is born. That's my oldest sister who is 15 years old now and so Brianna is born, then three, four years later, Tyler is born. And so I forget to tell you all that when I was coming up here, I was with my sister, who was also, if I was eight, she was nine at the time. So my older sister, but unfortunately, she was born with Down syndrome and a few medical problems. We have went through a few struggles, just, you know, being in America and then, for you know, my mom still struggling to get citizenship, it's, it was always a hard time when it came to those things, but she was so hard working that she always kept at it. Eventually became a visiting nurse, and that's where she worked in that field for over 10 years. And so going to the end of that, that's when she find a client that I would say, they clicked very well and started working together. And instead of going through agencies, she became a private caregiver or caretaker for an elderly. Um, at the time I'm in college, fast forward, I'm about 22, 23 now. I know my mom's working. I help out with the chores. I help out around the house at her job. It's a very, very intimate relationship. I'm always involved. So I don't really know the politics and everything else involved. I just know that I'm in class April 11, 2011, if I'm not mistaken. I get a call consistently from my mother. So I excuse myself and I pick up, but then it's my stepfather instead. And then he said, your mom's been arrested. But at this time, she's still an illegal immigrant in a sense because she's not a citizen, just reapplying for stuff. I don't really know the details of that either. But I know once I got that call from my stepfather and said she was arrested, that was like the most astonishing news Immediately, life changed. You know, it goes from looking forward to graduating college and hopefully becoming a therapist to just figuring out what bail is. Where do you go to get bail? How do you get bail? How old do you have to be? Then it comes to this whole journey of just literally trying to figure out life. How to fill the gap. We're completely lost and just fumbling all over New York City, you know, it goes from lights being turned off and just rent being overdue and just eviction, just pure hunger because I don't know what to do, where to go. So how I provided the basics and how my relationships was with my siblings, well, we got very close. And since my mom wasn't around, I tried to be more understanding and be a bit more patient because I understood at this point they were in a position that I had once been in, but worse, you know, their parent isn't there, but they're not in a comfort and place where you know they're fine and so you can go to sleep without worrying. Meeting the Osborne Association, helping us out with just going to see her after a while and taking the children to go see her, that kept that conversation intimate and it kept it 
from basically lashing out and just turning into tears because they got the information from my mother as well after a while and got consistent visit through the Osborne to go see them. And how we survived through the Osborne, they directed me to other organizations and, you know, food stamps and stuff like that. And then my mom was able to sign papers saying that I was the guardian since she wasn't around. And so eventually got those papers and I was actually able to take those papers into, you know, welfare and stuff like that to then get help about a year into it. <laughs>